Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back to your daily crypto news and analysis. And today we're going to be talking about Stellar Lumens, aka XLM. So let's just dive in and let's start off with this. So we recently seen their quarter three uh, report come out, which is uh, very exciting. Um, now we have the quarter two and the quarter three open side by side because that's the best way to really kind of see what has been happening. Uh, we do see that their executive summary starts on... Um, with two different ones over here we have of course the moneygram access uh, the Fre freighter vibrant 2.0 protocol 19 upgrade all that kind of stuff um, and then over here we actually have a little bit of a different one this one is actually kind of focused more on events there was 25 events and conferences uh, meridian was the biggest one they had 100 plus speakers for 45 plus sessions across three stages with 380 plus total attendees not a lot of attendees but still very good to kind of get the word out there and stuff like that. Um, and then, of course, Soraban was uh, also a big um, project that really kind of launched out, which, yes, we do have a full-on breakdown on that. We actually have that video here, uh, which we will talk about here in a second. Um, but I just wanted to kind of share with you guys, like, the, the events that we've seen back in quarter two and also the events that we've seen in quarter three as well, some of the upgrades here. Uh, the biggest one is, of course, the Sorban Adoption Fund, which was $100 million. But uh, let's listen closely to this. It's a three-minute long video. I'm not going to play the whole thing. I'll play like about a minute uh, just kind of give you guys a quick insight. The biggest quote of this is, we're moving faster on this than we've ever had before um, in terms of anything else, uh, which is uh, very interesting. And this is talking about the developments of this, the new smart contract platform built on Stellar. And listen closely. We're going to cover some things that are not technically bound to Q3, but for such significant work spanning so many teams and so many quarters, it seems like the right thing to do. Um, this year has been busy already for Sora Bond development, and we're moving really fast. In fact, I'd say we're moving faster on this than we've ever moved on anything before. Um, in Q3, we put out two preview releases. The August 1st preview release, it included initial versions of the Sora Bond environment, an SDK, and a CLI, and it let developers write and test contracts on their... By the way, the biggest thing about this is the mainnet launching in quarter two of 2023. Their local machine without depending on running a network. The September 13th preview release took into account initial feedback and helped us continue to refine the platform and to add new features to extend its functionality. And then on October 12th at Meridian, we announced the third preview release and the launch of Sorbonne on the future net, which is a first iteration of an incentivized test net. So early adopters can now write and deploy their own smart contracts in this Sorbonne testing environment and provide feedback in real time. We also announced a huge adoption fund, $100 million to be precise, that will go towards supporting developers to test and build on Sorabon. And we announced Sorabonathon First Light, the first incentive program to award these funds to developers for testing Sorabon and sharing feedback. Looking further into the future, we'll work to bring more iterations to the FutureNet, along with more incentives throughout this quarter and into early 2023. And in Q2 of 2023, We'll gear up for launch on mainnet. And that's basically what I wanted to share with you guys. So there's quite a bit of updates within this. This is going to be very large because this is going to bring smart contracts to the network, um, which will, of course, be powered by XLM, which is going to be very beneficial for the token. Uh, right now, there's not a ton of demanding XLM usage uh, besides being the fee source on the network, which I know that a lot of people are kind of confused about, which we will possibly get to here in this video as well and really kind of break that down. So with all that in mind, um, let's start off with the first executive summary. Um, <clears throat> this kind of gives us a little bit of a breakdown. So the executive summary is still kind of the same. You know, it's it's basically the same thing. They want to increase the scalability and network innovation, activate more network participation and demand and promote inclusion. Um, but then what is changed is uh, the Sorbonne. Uh, Sorbon is going to be really kind of the power source behind a lot of the network adoption. Uh, but what I really wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about was just the statistics. Um, and that's like the numbers behind all of this. So obviously we want to get rid of like kind of the most boring things here. Uh, there's going to be a lot more XLM rewards as you guys do see here in terms of like comp uh, completing each level of like the Stellar Quest Learn, all that kind of stuff. Really kind of focused on empowering developers and things like that. Um, but here we have some of the news coverage updates. I believe that we actually seen that over here as well. Um, I want to say at least, we, yeah, we did. So here we have it. So currently, 
Um, media impressions quarter over quarter. So 996 million were in quarter two. Um, here's quarter three. So we actually dropped down a little bit um, and our total media mentions were actually lower as well. Just kind of give you guys a quick insight on that. Uh, they did have a ton of vir virtual and live events. Um, pretty much the same amount here. Yeah, same amount. Nothing really changed there. Uh, what I want to talk to you guys a little bit more about, though, is the network statistics because that's what really kind of matters. Um, and we'll start with the accounts. So total accounts were 28.5% quarter two. Um, in quarter three, uh, we have 25.5%. So a drop of about 3%. So nothing too crazy there. By the way, this isn't comparing quarter two to quarter three. This is comparing quarter three of 2021 to quarter three of 2022. It's not comparing these two as you guys do see here, by the way. I, I hope that that wasn't confusing a lot of people. Um, total payments, 166%. Uh, we have about 114%. And then also, if we were to really kind of compare these two, the uh, total payments did drop from quarter two to even quarter uh, three. I mean, like total payments over here were about 90 point, almost 9 million. We'll say like 91 million. This is what was about like 64 million. Same with accounts. Accounts were about 7 point, almost 2 uh, million. Sorry. Uh, and also the accounts here, or sorry, let me go back to the accounts here. So this was about almost 7 million. This is about like 7 point almost 2 million, which is still pretty good growth, by the way. Um, and then down here, average dis daily decentralized exchange volume, 415%, 30, almost 9 million. Um, don't know what the decentral or sorry, yeah, decentralized exchange volume over here was like 24 million. So a pretty, pretty nasty decrease there, to be honest. Um, and then over here, we do see total operations, 900, almost 57 million. Uh, that was in quarter three, by the way. In quarter two, it was about 823. So we have a lot more operations, which is uh, very good to see. And then uh, relevant assets, uh, we see the growth down here, which we can get to over here as well. So back here, it was 212%. This is only 11.9%. Again, comparing the quarters of quarter two to quarter two of uh, 2022 to 2021, it was 258 million. This was about 200 and almost 60 million, which is still some nice growth. Uh, the growth year over year was about 0.97x. This is about 0.1x. Not a lot there. Also, 1.1x uh, year over year total uh, growth of relevant asset transaction volume. Uh, this was about 3.1x over on the 2020. Uh, the quarter two 2022 uh, quarterly report. A relevant assets 82 to 79. This was 89 to 79. And uh, they have a full, they, they have uh, other ones as well, like the close time. This actually decreased, which is good. Um, we also see the AMM uh, statistics, uh, statistics here as well. Um, not too much crazy updates besides that. Um, in terms of numbers, here's the Sorbon. Um, updates as well. I think that the smart contracts is going to generate a lot more hype around the network. I think that's going to provide a lot more um, dApps and stuff like that to launch out on the mainnet. Also, in terms of the partnership highlights, they did add quite a bit of partnerships, as you guys do see here, uh, which is really kind of empowering a lot of the stablecoin adoption. Uh, total investment, by the way, enterprise fund investments was about 12 million. I believe that we have that statistic here as well well uh so yeah here we have um so total investment to stable corp was about three hundred thousand dollars a total investment was about 10 million in that quarter so they are not only including a lot more like they're not only doing a lot more funding for uh fund investments but they're also trying to expand a lot more in terms of marketing which is very crucial uh, for a lot of success. So I think that this is great. Um, they do have a lot more statistics over here in terms of a lot more investments into some of these other names. So it's like about 5 million in these two, uh, which was Wave and Securency. And then also DFS Lab was about 2 million, 2 million into NetSys as well as NetXD. And then we do see $10 million investment to NetSys as well as NetXD. This is quarter two enterprise fund investments as well. They put a star next to that. Um, but yeah, very exciting. 
a lot more investments. I love to see a lot more investments into the ecosystem of growth because it really is crucial. It's also why I love to see these events, which they do go on to mention here. So not not too bad at all. Um, they also do mention the Lumen distribution, uh, which this is from July 2022 to uh, September 2022. Uh, the total amount was, so they break it down for direct development. Uh, various was about 360, almost 3 million. Um, and then they break it down even more with a lot of the other ones. Um, I don't know if they, so direct development was about like 3.7 billion. So this is the ending balance in SDF's wallets. So they still have a ton more of funding available in terms of XLM. Marketing support is still sitting at about almost 2 billion XLM. So this is very incredible. New products as well, like if they start releasing this, if they start to really kind of grow on this, this is going to be very beneficial. Uh, the next report is quarter four in January. I'm very excited for it. We will definitely be uh, reporting on that. But I do think that if we continue to see a lot more development like this in terms of funding and stuff like that, it's going to be very, very beneficial. And also talking about XLM and how XLM does grow, a lot of these stable coins are starting to um, you know, build out on Stellar. Like I said, there was a lot of funding there for them. Uh, this is from Global Stellar over on Twitter. Uh, now this is talking about a lot more of those stable coins, GUSD uh, on Stellar. And we see that all of this is backed by XLM. Like XLM is the main power source behind it. Stellar makes this super easy. XLM is used for transactional fees on the Stellar network. So as more and more adoption happens on the network, more and more Stellar, aka XLM, is uh, utilized, which means a higher price valuation for it, very similar to any other major network out there. Um, and what I wanted to really kind of talk to you guys a little bit about is that there's big buy orders on XLM. There was uh, about $203,000 worth of XLM bought on the market uh, at about 11 and a half cents. <clears throat> Excuse me. Right now, we're sitting at about the same price point. One thing I want to note, though, is XLM lagging behind XRP. So I've been talking about this for a little bit of time on this channel. Recently, I just said that XRP on the daily chart was coiling up. The craziest thing is, is that on the weekly, XLM is coiling up. Very similar to what we've seen down here on XRP. I believe that this thing is about to break out. Um, we need a lot more volume in, just to give you guys a quick insight, but off of the lows down here, we'll, we'll go off of the full-on lows, um, XRP did about a 75% uh, um, move. And I would say that this is basically around the same um, channel that we are looking at. Uh, so if we are looking at a 74% move, we'll say 75. 75 is not bad because it's like right next to 75. This would be about an 18 cent, almost a 19 cent XLM. I think that this is you know, probable. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say it's going to go directly to 18. I could see this lagging a little bit behind, maybe doing like a 68% or even possibly hitting resistance at the uh, support zone that we've seen back in March of 2022. Uh, so we'll say something like, maybe something like this uh, for a resistance zone. Sorry. Here, let me move this down a little bit. There we go. Uh, so this would still be a nice move. It would be right under the 200 weekly um, EMA. Uh, this would be about a 61% move. I think that this is very possible uh, depending on how much volume we start to see in. Uh, right now, this has been coiled up. I've been talking to you guys a little bit about this. Good thing is right now on XLM um, is the fact that on the daily, we started to break up above EMAs. We broke out above currently the 50-day EMA. I am targeting the 200 daily EMA at about 13 and a half cents from our current level. This would be roughly 18% uh, of an increase in price if Bitcoin does allow it. Um, if we can break up above that, I do expect the resistance point from the May time frame uh, to be target, which is at 15 cents which again, on the daily compared to the weekly, it is a little bit different. 
Uh, we've also been looking at the three day. The three day has also been a beautiful chart to look at for a lot of these tokens, as you guys do see. Uh, we have been trading against the 50 uh, three day EMA for a while. We really need to break out above this. This is a crucial point for us, like 12 cents, um, for us to kind of match what XRP has been doing. Remember, XLM does follow closely behind XRP, but so far we've been lagging uh, quite a bit. And the reason why I bring this up is because we just recently talked about XRP uh, doing a big move because on the daily, this was tightening between all of the EMAs. I think that if we are looking at XLM on the daily uh, chart, so let's actually zoom in here real quick. And look at this. I mean, it's tightening. We were trading below the EMAs. Breaking above this is very crucial, uh, but we want to have a strong support zone being built out here. I would personally love to see some sideways momentum here building to kind of build out a strong floor model, very similar to what we've seen down here, as well as what we've seen during the summertime, um, and then break up above it, build a floor, continue to build a floor, and then kind of start to break out. Um, right now, a lot of resistance. A lot of resistance at around like 13 cents or so. Um, but I would love to see it kind of repeat what XRP has done. Um, XRP has done a very well, uh, or sorry, has done a very good job at breaking out and has been doing very well recently. And we were really kind of waiting for that momentum to build and have that strong breakout. Obviously, was it volume induced? There wasn't a ton of volume on the daily, honestly. So when we really kind of look at this, and we could actually look at um, an indicator, we have to add the volume indicator to really kind of see if there was a lot more volume in. Um, so let's actually look here. So yeah, there was not a ton of volume to push it up. Uh, so this was just it tightening and then it deciding what to do here. Uh, so right now, if Bitcoin could allow for XLM to really kind of start to break out, then I would be targeting these higher time frames. But it's hard to say right now with what Bitcoin is doing. It is the weekend. So weekend price action is always usually a scam. So I wouldn't be necessarily, you know, waiting on the sidelines, waiting for a breakout and buying right now. I would just kind of wait until Monday. I usually never trade the weekends, just so you guys know. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Guys, do definitely leave a like, subscribe to notifications on if you guys have more free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. As always, up to you all. Have a beautiful day, beautiful night. If you guys are in this beautiful world, this has been Nick. Peace out, guys.